And if you go one standard deviation left and right, so minus one and plus one, there is 68% of the data in this window, mm -hmm. which means that this is 34% and this is 34%. Yeah. If you go two standard deviations away, this is now 95% of the data. Now, if you subtract 68 from 95, that's 27, and divide by two, that's 13.5 and 13.5. The reason I'm asking if you get that reference sheet is it's a lot easier to look at a reference sheet than to do this on a test or a quiz by hand. You, the, the, the normal table does not help you with the empirical rules. That's, that's why I'm bringing that up. And then if you go three standard deviations away, that is 99.7. And that's 2.7%, which when you divide by two is 1.35%. So there's a million of these pictures on the internet, but you have to know how to, to do this. You know, how to like, you have to know where these percentages lie and these down here. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of how to actually do this problem, you need the uh, mean and standard deviation. So for the first one, that goes back to this question, well, is it the variance of standard deviation? So for the first one, it's 373, let me look at the right wording, um, mildly obese people, that sounds kind of horrible. Um, <laughs> all right, so, okay. <laughs> I don't know, mildly obese. So that's uh, that's got a mean of 373, and a sigma squared of 67. And what you really want is the square root of 67. Mm -hmm. Although again, like I'm not completely sure. So, cause I, I don't know, do you, and you don't have the answers to these. Um, cause I'm, there I'm, are I, this, some in the textbook. Let me This see. one kind mm -hmm. of looks okay as, as actually being the, uh, this one. Yeah. Let me also, I, I, I kind of think you're, uh, I'm going to check in the textbook that chapter to see if they say anything about that. Yeah, I don't know. Just, he teaches very confusing. So this one suggests that the 67 is the uh, the standard deviation. Okay. So we actually, uh, so we're going to use uh, use that. So that uh, that that it's just important because I don't want to give you the wrong answer, but you have to basically add and subtract two sigma for the 95 percent. That's mm -hmm. that's what this middle one says. This is go too smaller, too larger. So you're taking 373 and subtracting 2 times 67, comma, 373 plus 2 times 67. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that seems right. I'm looking at a table from that chapter in the textbook, and it does show it as like the 68, 95, 99 rule. It's the mean plus the standard deviation, and then it's yeah, not the variant. Yes, it looks like okay, that. So, so now the, the other direction, you're adding it, and it's 507. Now, what what sometimes they ask you to do on a test, or, or on a test, it'll be like multiple choice, where it'll say like mildly obese people, the 95% fall within these two uh, numbers. And they'll have like units, but it'll be a full sentence, a minutes in this case. And then lean people... So lean has a mean of mean of 
526 minutes and standard deviation of 107. So it's the same thing. You take the 526 plus or minus two times 107 and One six three hundred and twelve seven forty. So that's the that's the setup for those. If it asked for the ninety nine point seven percent, you would have to go three standard deviations, something like that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, is it okay if we move on to 3.28? Yeah. All right. So this one is is uh, going to use the table. Wow. Why is that? It's interesting. Why isn't it sniffing? Okay. Let me do... All right, so you're we kind of we kind of did this in the previous problem. You 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 as you're learning this, you really do want to draw a curve, some sort of a bell curve, and then zeros in the middle. So where is minus one point six three? Well, here are places that it's not. It's not there, and it's not there. So like make it look reasonable. It's somewhere there. It like it doesn't need to be exactly, but it needs to not be in completely the wrong spot. Okay. And then this means to shade left. Okay. And I think it's important. I would I would really emphasize this if the, I was in a classroom to students that seen this for the first time, like draw it every time. Yeah. Every time, draw it. And then eventually yeah, you won't need to. Mm -hmm. So now, how does the table look? Now you're going to get this table in uh on your test correct and and uh, i can't even believe that students even ask things like am i gonna have to remember this table it's like no that's ridiculous oh, but there's so that's... many numbers <laughs> yeah but no, but I, I guess that that could be a consideration so um let's talk about how the table works okay because every like if you were to, a lot of students um take stats like you're doing and then they they go and get a master's degree or they go back to school or this and else they take another stats class and they might get you might get a different table, you might use this normal curve in another class. The way this one works, because they, they sometimes work slightly differently, is this one always gives you what's called the left tail, okay? Which is what we want here. This is this is a, a tail, uh, mm -hmm. left tail, okay? Now, the Z value, you start over here and you look for your Z value. Now, minus 1.6 is right there, mm -hmm. and then Point three is there. So you're going to find the intersection of, of those. Okay. So 0 0.0516 is the area in the tail here. The area is 0 0.0516. Your calculator will also do this for you. Have you guys been seeing that in class? it can no he like never brings up the calculator okay I swear i we feel like it can do stats it has a stat button but i don't it, know it can it. it can well and we'll get to that let's let's learn to use the table uh and then we'll you know we'll, we'll you know we'll use the, the calculator um any questions on that that first no one? that makes sense okay the second one is i'm stalling because i don't have it up in front of me All right All right, for B, it says Z is greater than minus 1.63. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to draw it again. So here, you know, here's zero. There's minus 1.63. This time it's to the right yeah. of it. Okay. Your table, your table does not give to the right. It only gives to the left. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what the whole area under the curve adds up to? Everything one. under the curve, one. So the answer to this one is that it's really one minus the, the left tail. Mm -hmm. 
So you can, you know, you can remember this, like some students put this into their, their note sheet. They say the right tail is one minus the left tail. Yeah. And so if you, if you could get the left tail, which we just did in the previous problem, it was 0 0.0516, it just happens to be the same. The area to the right is, is 1 minus 0 0.0516, which is 0 0.9484. And that's your answer. Okay. So the table can only give you left. Mm -hmm. So if you need the right, you have to go get that left tail and subtract it from one. Yeah. So that's just how I leave the answer, 0. 0.9484, yes. because yes. it's a proportion. So it's like it, it's considered unitless. Yeah. It it okay. doesn't have it's um it's not a traditional area like when you're thinking of tile or carpet or mm -hmm. uh, size of a golf green. Um, it's just it's just uh it's just that. So now this one. Uh oh, and by the way, and a, a, another aside here, if it's z greater than or greater than or equal to. These are the same. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's if it's greater than or greater than or equal to. Totally doesn't matter. So again, there's zero. So we'll say 0.92 is right there. We want the area to the right of it. I think it's a really good idea as a student to show what you're trying to find. Yeah. And then since you want the right, what you really need is the area left and mm -hmm. subtract it from one. So if we go back to your table, I'll snip in your, your table again, because we need a different part of it. Excuse me. Um, okay, so this time it's positive Z. Z is positive. So we, we want to go to 0 0.92. So on your Z table, there's 0 0.9. And then you go over to 0 0.92. Okay. All right. Now this is the area again, left, left, like left. Yeah. So to get your area, it's one minus point eight eight two one two. Which is point one seven eight two. Now it's it's really important on a test to do it the way we're doing here because it's gonna it's typically given as a multiple choice. And here are the multiple choice answers. Mm -hmm. All the answers that like you you that kind of look right if you don't have any idea what you're doing. Yeah. So be be very careful. Okay. All right, part B is a between. And again, doesn't matter if these if these symbols are there or not there, it's the same setup. So you draw the normal curve yet again. And zero, so there's 0 0.92, there's minus 1.63, and we want the area between. Hmm. Okay. So the, the only way to do this is to do the following. If we're going to find the area left of 0.92, and we're going to find the area left of minus 1.63, and then we're going to subtract. If you take this whole area on the left and subtract out this little piece, do you see that it will give you the middle? Yeah. Are you sure that's clear? Because it this is a uh, most difficult type of this problem. So then, like, with the how do you use the table with that? 
Yeah, we're going to find the area left of 0.92. Then we're going to find the probability that z is less than minus 1.63, and we're going to subtract them. So let's go to the table. We actually already have this number. But again, to go to the table, it's mm -hmm. 0.8212. And then the area left of minus 1.63, we actually already found that from a previous problem, 0 0.0516. And so we subtract those to get our, our result. Okay. Point, uh, point 0.7696. Okay, so just to like go back in time to really like trivial problem, like what we basically did is we took something like this. And let's just say uh, we, 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 we have like these are all shaded. We've shaded five of them mm -hmm. and this one only has one shaded and if we were to subtract how many shaded would we have we would have the four shaded four. right but that's what we're doing to get okay. the middle like this becomes and i know it's 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 a really silly example but that's that's mm -hmm. it becomes this the between yeah okay so what so what you have to remember there, there are three types of problems that they will give you. Left tail, which is a, this one or this one, and that's a straight lookup. You just look it up in the table or the calculator. Right tail, okay, you end up doing one minus the left tail. So you, you get the left tail value, you look it up, and then you do one minus that. And then what's called two tail, or the between is you, it's either this one or this one or this one or this one. You do two left tails and subtract. So you have to know how to do each of these three types of problems. Okay. Yeah. And then everything else from, from this point forward is the same. They all turn into either a left tail a right tail or a two tail between. Okay. Yeah. It's just hard going to stats from all the other math classes. It feels like it's, there's no, there's no continuation you know, from it's like, just... how is greater and greater it, it, or equal to the same thing? Like that's okay. just it's so great. Yeah. Well, you would, you would have to take a calculus based statistics class to get the best answer. Um, yeah. But uh, that's not what you got here. Um, yeah, but this table is helpful. I'm going to, that makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of like the union and and thing. With yeah. Graphing. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. So a lot of words here. Uh, they're saying that the standard. Uh, sorry, this, so this this Stanford Binet IQ test was used and it had a mean of 100 mm -hmm. and a standard deviation of 15. So what you want to start doing is get in the habit of saying, oh, that's that's mu and that's sigma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's that's important. Now, the next question here, it says, IQ score, what, what the actual question says, the IQ scores above 130 are, are often called very superior. What percentage of children had very superior scores in 1932? So what, you, what, you're, what you're doing is you're converting this thing right here into what I call a probability statement. Mm -hmm. And the probability statement is the probability that X is greater than 130. Okay. Above means greater than. This is your probability statement. Is this right tail or left tail? This is 
right tail. Right tail. Okay, good. So you might even you might even make a note of that. It's right tail. Mm -hmm. Now, what's most common is to convert this to what's called a Z statement, what I call a Z statement, or a Z, mm -hmm. it ends up being a, a Z score. Z is equal to X minus mu over sigma. Have you seen that in class? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a mu? Yes, 100. Do you, do you have a sigma? 15. Right. So if you if you're using a formula, you better have all the numbers. 130 minus 100 over 15. This ends up being two. So your z statement is the probability that z is greater than two. Okay. So we converted this x, this x to a z. That is fairly common to do mm -hmm. in this class. And now again, probably a good idea to draw a curve. There's zero, there's two. We want the area to the right of two. Does the table give you the area right of two? Mm -hmm. Um. The No. No, it only gives you left. So mm -hmm. you can't get this directly. You have to go to your, you have to go find the area to the left of two and subtract it from one. So this is gonna be one minus whatever this area is. So will you, and, and so two, two is really 2.00. Mm -hmm. can, can you go to your table and tell me the Z value? I'm sorry, not the Z value, the area at 2.00. Mm -hmm. Um, it's point, point nine, seven, seven, two. Good. So you subtract and that is your final answer. Okay. So then the statement is a so score now the, okay. of 130 is... Well, the question, the question that it asked here is what percentage? Is this a percentage? Mm, no. It is not. 0.28%. Yeah. So that's, again, if this were a multiple choice test, you might see that answer. You might see that answer. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't particularly like that style, but that's, that's a possibility. So just, you don't mm -hmm. see this number as well. Um, but uh the main thing I want to make sure you're comfortable with is the idea of how to use the table. And it, it sounds like you're doing okay. Yeah, uh, with it makes that. a lot more sense now. Okay. Part B. So part B says present day children. All right. So present day children took the test. And that's where you got to go back and be like, well, what's different? Well, it says present day children have a mean about 120. So that's the new mu. So in this problem, uh, wait, it says, okay. So it says that mu is equal to 120. Standard deviation is still 15. We want to know the probability that X is greater than 130 again. Okay. So they're they're trying to they're, they're trying to get you to see, well, how does changing the the mean affect this number? Well. You again have to calculate your z. Your z is x minus mu over sigma, 120 minus, sorry, 130 minus 120 over 15. And so this gives you 10 over 15, which is 0.6 repeating. So you generally round your z scores to two decimal places. That's an accepted, accepted uh, practice. Yeah. Okay. So this time, when you draw your, your normal curve here, right, there's zero. So 0. 0.67 is like there. So we would expect this to be bigger than this uh, one. Yeah. But again, our table doesn't, when you go to the table, it doesn't give you the right tail. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. okay. So you have to go to do the probability that Z is greater than 0.67. It's one minus the probability that Z is less than 0.67 or this left tail number. Yeah. Okay, I found the number we need to subtract from one is 0.7486. Okay. And there you have it. Okay, yeah, so that's a lot higher, 25%. Okay, now one of the things we could do is I could show you how to do all of these problems we just did uh, starting here with the calculator. Or we can go on to some other stuff that you want us to look at. Um, okay, why don't we just do a couple of them? Can you pull okay. up that thing where you do the calculator yeah. on your, yeah, that's helpful. And mine, mine will, the 84 is way more charming than the 83 that I've got here, but yeah. it'll, it'll, uh, I think it'll still show everything I want to show here. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. So before we can, uh, before we can jump to the calculator, I have to give you a little bit of background information here. So when you do, your calculator is going to ask for what's called a lower and an upper. Mm -hmm. So for the first one, minus 1. 1.63. This is called, this over here on the left is, what a lot of students do is they type in negative 10 to the 99 power. This is your lower and this is your upper. And you, you might wonder, well, what is this? This is the equivalent of negative infinity. So your calculator is going to always require two bounds, a lower and an upper. Yeah. Your upper bound is that's right here on the right. So when it's left tailed like this, you're going to always use this negative 10 to the 99. Okay. All right. So let me let me go to the calculator. All right. So uh, let's see here. Let me try to remember where it is. Stat. This is second. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's go to make make what on. So it it it's under second. You hit the second button and then var, which is really distribution. Mm -hmm. And then you want what's called the normal CDF. Okay. I'm just writing this down. And then I hope we have the same screen. Okay, so yours probably has a different screen than this. What does yours show? I don't have my calculator with me, but it looks very similar. <laughs> well, it's it, yeah. that's the important thing is uh, yeah. the T84 has a different view. Let me go find it real quick. Okay. Um, I know I'm supposed to have one. It's I just I need to get around to doing it. Um, yeah, so this is what yours will show. All right, so let me actually jump back to the other screen. So your calculator will show something like this. So when you change this to minus 10 to the 99, minus 1.63, for a normal distribution, your mean is zero and your standard deviation is one. And then you hit paste. Okay. You will get you will get the uh the same result as what we've been doing. So I'm gonna do that for this one. Negative negative ten comma minus one point six three. Okay, so I'm going to snip this in. So when you hit paste, it's going to paste basically what I have on my screen here. Paste will put that on your screen. And then we our answer was 0 0.0516. You can see how it's the same. Yeah. Now, I would recommend we not do any more until you have your calculator, because it's really important that you go through the steps. Um, uh -huh. But the right tail, 
the right tail is similar. I think we had 0.92. Yeah. This is considered positive infinity over here to the right. Most mm -hmm. students use 10 to the 99. So this becomes your lower bound and your upper bound. Okay. And then mu is, is zero and sigma is one. The best one is the between. So I'll, I'll show you that really quickly next here between. So you had one where it was minus 1.63 to 0.92. This is the best case because this is your lower and this is your upper. Yeah. And again, mu is zero, sigma is one. Okay, what else would you like us to look at today? Um, I think I put in one of the little quizzes we took in class, which is huh? just a couple more of these. Yeah. And that'll show what kind of questions he asks. They're always super wordy. You are on a hike through the woods when suddenly you encounter a bear. Remember, this isn't just any bear. This is the great and powerful bear wizard, grizzly bear. The sky turns dark as the bear turns your way. Its piercing eyes lock with yours. That sounds like a, a powerful sensation washes across your body and you're unable to look away. This is that. That's actually how romance novels are, are written, kind of like that. <laughs> so, okay. Unmoving, the bear begins to speak directly into your mind. Okay, that's weird. Uh, in two days' time, a curse will fall upon your family. There is uh, one way to free yourself from this fate. Before the moon reaches its peak tomorrow night, you must bring me a salmon no shorter than 82 centimeters in length. Okay. So all of this was useless until you get to this part up here about the length of the salmon. So because you're a native... English speaker, you have to decide, is it the following? Is it X less than 82? Or is this what they're really asking? And this is maybe the most difficult part of the question. Which is it? Which it's is correct? More than 82. Right. And you wouldn't, you'd, you'd be surprised how many students cannot do that. Um, but that is, that is the, that is what is needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where you um, have a, what I call a probability statement, and you have to convert this to a Z. So you need a mu and you need a sigma. So if you keep reading, it says, the length of adult salmon is distributed normally with a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of five. What percent of adult salmon are long enough to satisfy grizzly bears uh, request? So just like the problems we were doing here, we have to calculate a Z value. Mm -hmm. 82 minus 70 over five. Let me, um, so could you calculate that for us, please? Or do you not, you don't have a calculator at all? Well, I can do it. Two point four. Two point four. Okay. And and because it's a greater than here. It's it's also a greater than in the Z. So it's probably that Z is greater than 2.4. Mm -hmm. So we go to, we draw, you know, normal curve again. There's 2.4. Do we want to the right or the left? We want to the right. Does the table give, does the table give to the right? No. It only gives to the left. And that is 0 0.9918. So we need one minus 0 0.9918. 0 
point zero zero eight two. All right. So that's not a percentage, though. That's a decimal. So we need to multiply by 100 to get the percentage, 0.82%, which means there are not that many of them. I got that one right. Oh, good. <laughs> any, uh, any other thoughts or questions on that? No, that's good. And then B is the... Three standard deviations. So, so because we already have the mean and standard deviation, mm -hmm. uh, we we can answer this question. But this is basically I should take your mean and add three sigma to it. Yeah. Okay. So your mean is seventy. Well, I, I'll be right back with you. Be right okay. back. 30 seconds. All right, so we uh, I'm back here. So the uh, three standard deviations above the mean, above means adding. So it's your mean, which is 80, sorry, 70 plus five, three times five, 85 centimeters. And the units are important. All right, well, got 100% on that quiz. Good, good. You don't That's have your, nice. it looks like you took that over a week ago. You don't have your grade yet on it? Um, No, he grades very slowly. So I don't think he has a CA. I don't know. It's like nothing's up. He's yeah. so messy. Like he always shows up 10 minutes late for class and the class is 50 minutes long. So. That's, uh, could be good, could be bad. <laughs> Nothing All right, let's out. uh let's look at uh got, got some time here. Love. Let's look at some of these examples. Maybe yeah. you've already done these in your uh in your uh yeah in class, but um trying to see which one I would want to do. Maybe this one on page eight. Hey, Ella, I am back. Uh, did you get a, a result for this? Oh, yeah, one sec. Um... Um, point okay, well, it's nine hundred seven eight and then sorry, this this is to the left. I'm giving yeah. you the wrong picture. Classic. Okay. So it's point zero zero two two. No, no, this one's to the left. This one's just oh. a straight table lookup. Point point nine nine seven eight. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. So then uh, let's look at, let's just say I wanted you to find the probability that X is greater than minus 0.75. Just make one up here. So there's minus 0.75. So we want everything to the right of it. Okay. So that would be 0. 0.7734. Okay, very good. So the most difficult ones are the betweens because you have to do two calculations. Mm -hmm. So this is a between. So you have to find first find the probability that Z is less than 2.85. So that's that's you you've you've kind of already done this. We actually have already done that. And then you need to find the probability that Z is less than minus 1.66. Okay. Which is another another area. And then you subtract the two to get the between. Okay. So Less than minus 1.66 is 0 0.0485, and then 2.85. So Seem right. Um, but point nine four eight three. Does that sound right? For the first one, or for the whole the whole difference between them? The difference. So point minus point. Yeah, that's pretty. That's that's probably right on because you got point zero four eight five. You said for this one. Mm -hmm. And then for the we already did this one. It was uh point nine nine so two. So that's my rating. I don't know. Point uh, two point eight five. It's uh, point nine nine seven eight. Yeah, point nine nine seven eight. Okay, and then you subtract them. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. So all the other problems tend to fall into like these one of these types, you know, left tailed or right tailed or between. And so yeah. you'll be you'll be doing a bunch of those in this course. Um, okay. There's some other types of questions. There's kind of what are called backwards questions. Those are something I would have liked to have gotten to today. The backwards questions are when they give you the area. They'll give you the area, and you have to find the z or the x value. Today okay. you've been given the x. And the Z to find the to find the area. Yeah. So there, that's probably coming up coming up next. Yeah. That makes All sense. right. We're gonna go ahead and. Uh...